So I wanted to show, I can't use stew for study because it's so dark here. This is like five o'clock in Florida. It looks like I'm in Michigan, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it's been like this all day. I remember in Michigan, you know, you get those days and it's just for weeks, man, you just get this cloud cover. It's just dreary. You know, no sunlight, no sunlight for weeks at a time. How in the hell I lived in Michigan for 20 years? I don't know. But anyway, I can't use, can't use super study. So if this jumps around a bit, my apologies. So I'm going to call this video keeping an open mind, keeping an open mind. Because I had a discussion with a good friend of mine, and uh, we, we definitely beg to differ on certain things. And I'll get into that. But the first question for you is, why do we have say, daylight savings time? especially here in Florida why would you want to take a day or an hour out of your day you know I mean I I don't know I, I don't do much at six o'clock in the morning with now that I'm semi-retired uh, but I do get out in the evenings and try to you know I might walk around the neighborhood or whatever why are we gonna shave an hour off of our lives first thing I know that sounds stupid to start the video with that but it just pisses me off that I can't get out you know, like two o'clock in the afternoon because the day's going to be over at five o'clock. You know, it's ridiculous. But the uh, keeping an open mind. So the first thing is I want to encourage you to watch Scott Ritter on uh, on on the, what is it called? Ask the Inspector. Great show, great show. God dang, I wish I had a tenth of his brain cells. He is one smart dude. He, I mean, they ask him questions, and I'm thinking, okay, because it'll be about some battle that took place in 300 BC uh, between the the Klingons and the uh, Federation and uh, and he, he'll just quote it right off yeah in that battle they came across and they came over the wall and but you really can't compare that to you know what happened in in Israel you know and uh, oh my god I, I just so I he never seems to get stumped on a question but the reason why I'm talking about him sorry it's a little bit cold my nose is running just a tad I might have to remake this video but I uh, what, what he was saying was, you know, first thing is the baby story. He says that it uh, didn't happen. And I got people on X. Uh, and that's that's basically my only sources. I don't have any inside sources anymore. Everybody I know is dead. But uh, so people on X and Scott Ritter saying that that's, that's, that was a lie put out by Israel. Now did a baby head probably get blown off in the crossfire? Yeah, probably. That's a soft little melon. You know, make any size bullet would just take that head clean off, right? So that's uh, that was the first thing that he pointed out. The second one was those kids partying next to the uh, wall that got caught, you know, got caught up in the battle. Now, if the Israeli story was at first that the Hamas came out and just killed all the kill them, killed them all. But then Scott Ritter points out, and when you see the pictures, I agree. Like I said, keeping an open mind. All those cars were just torn to pieces. So what Scott says happened is the Apache helicopters came in from the Israeli side and just indiscriminately shot all the cars, not knowing whether Hamas were in the cars or whether it was the Israeli kids partying. The next question that nobody seems to want to ask, why are you having a party next to a prison? <laughs> I mean, what the hell? I mean, imagine, oh okay, yeah, let's go have a party next to, uh, you know, Sam Quentin and uh, we'll, we'll broadcast the music over the wall into the uh, for, to the prisoners there. Maybe we can antagonize them or something. I, I, that didn't make much sense to me why you're having a party right there next to the wall. But who knows? Maybe there's some equipment there that they needed. So that story got discounted. The baby story got discounted. Uh, the raping of women. I did see one video of a, of a woman. She was about half naked and uh, they were dragging her and... I think they were kicking and spitting on her. My question is, nobody asked about that video, was was she an Israeli soldier? You know, women are in the Israeli military, and I'm, I'm going to tell you that in the heat of battle, uh, sometimes prisoners get treated badly, you know, especially if she might have just shot a couple of Hamas uh, soldiers, and, uh, and so they were taking out you know, whoever it was, and it looked like it might have been just a Palestinian citizen taking out some wrath on her. That's the only video they saw of any rape or anything like that. So if you got any videos, send them to me. I'll I'll update accordingly. So those three stories completely discounted. Now the thing that happened to me, okay, was was when it first happened, man, I was like, go get them, Israel, get in there and murder all those Hamas terrorists for what they've done. What they did was 
beautifully executed uh, military uh, strategic operation. I'm going to tell you that right now, which is a pr pretty amazing considering, you know, uh, and, and the, the weapons and stuff. A lot of that stuff was homemade. How in the hell they had the technology and the or the, the the intelligence to be able to make a lot of that stuff? But anyway, um, so anyway, getting back to to how I felt. So I was hoping that Israel was going to you know go in there, guns a blazing and uh, and root them out, you know, drop some hand grenades down in those tunnels and uh, and get them. Well, and then of course you know I I was totally in, in sync with all of the stories. I thought, man, these guys are animals. They need to be exterminated. And then the story started to evolve and it started to change and Israel showed its true colors. And they came in and they indiscriminately bombed the people of Gaza and the pictures started to come out of dead babies and, and women blown apart and people missing limbs and hospitals being destroyed. And I was thinking, you know, my God, what, what are they doing? I mean, this is insane. What, what do they think they're doing? Now, let me, let me, a lot of people are justifying this. They're saying, oh, well, you know, they're complicit. They're complicit. And the tunnels are underneath the hospitals. Well, maybe so, maybe not. I don't know. I'm not there. I can't get underneath the hospital to see if there's a tunnel there. Still, you don't kill a bunch of people to get to the tunnel. Anyway, so, uh, or you at least get them out of the building first and then go blow up, you know, where you think the tunnel is. I mean, it, getting back to World War II. And that, that, like, they'll use this as an example. Oh, in World War II, we bombed the German cities. What do you think of that? Well, yeah, we did. We killed a hell of a lot of German civilians. And that's why after World War II, that was declared a war crime. So that it would never happen again, or so we thought. Of course, the United States then turned around and did it in, uh, in Iraq. We carpet bombed the city. So look at the, look at the countries that are committing war crimes. It's the United States, Israel, Russia hasn't. I mean, from what I can tell, Russia's been very, very much focused on military targets only, which is what Israel could have done. Now, my point to my friend is, Israel's turning a whole damn world against them. Okay? What they needed to do was take advantage of the situation, show some restraint, go, go out to the world and say, look, you know, we're going to go in, we're going to get Hamas one way or another. You know, in fact, I want we're going to bring them to the table here and say, look, you know, you turn over our hostages, you do this, and maybe uh, we'll show you some mercy. Uh, instead, you know, they went batshit crazy and just started killing everybody. Now, according to my buddy, that's just collateral damage. Well, I guess that little baby in Israel getting its head blown off, that's just collateral damage. All them kids at the festival, that's just collateral damage. You see where you're going down that slippery slope when you say everything is collateral damage? There has to be some restraint to how human beings treat each other, okay? Yes, if you're attacked, you want to go in and kill the people that attacked you. No doubt about it. But you don't go in and kill a bunch of innocent people that had nothing to do with the attack. And then, you know, and especially when it's children, I, mean, I understand some of them children might be brainwashed at this point. Well, guess what? You can re-educate them later on, the children especially. Uh, the women. I'm sorry. I'm just uh, maybe I'm just a, a male, stupid person. I mean, because women certainly haven't treated me good in my life. But I don't know. Just just, just seeing a woman blown apart just doesn't sit right with me. It doesn't sit right with me. I don't know about you. I, you know, if it's and especially even a teenager. You know, a young man who's a teenager seeing him blown with his arm hanging half off and knowing that the rest of his life that could have he could have had is gone you know uh i don't know that's just a, to me and then of course i use the word genocide and he says no it's collateral damage well okay call it whatever you want it's still i think it's wrong and genocide is a very strong term but when you carpet bomb for what was it august 7th we've been since we're, we're so for over a month they're killing they've been killing them by the hundreds each day civilians not military not hamas I imagine Hamas, most of them are still down in the tunnels. They haven't, they haven't killed the people that killed them yet.
I just wanted to get on my box. This is a made for X video. I ain't gonna even bother to put it up on YouTube or Rumble. But if you ever want to watch me, I'm that cybersecurity guy on YouTube and the burn on Rumble. Peace out. Stay free.